welcome to Science at Home. My name is Dr. Kate Bieberdorf, but you may know me as Kate the Chemist. I am a chemistry professor, science entertainer, and author of the Big Book of Experiments. Playing and experimenting with bubbles is one of my favorite things to do, but using an old bubble wand can get really boring really quickly. So today, I'm going to spruce it up just a little bit and show you how to make a colorful bubble snake by using your breath and a plastic bottle. So let's talk about the science of how bubbles are formed. Bubbles are really just gases or molecules that have been trapped inside of another material. That material is usually soap, and that soap usually contains a molecule called a surfactant. So the surfactant has two different sides. One side is hydrophobic, or afraid of water. The other side is hydrophilic, and it actually likes water. So when we bring these two pieces of the molecule together, we are able to see that the material traps the gases on the inside with one side of the molecule, and then the other part is able to keep the bubbles and the water on the other side. So you have gas on the inside and liquid on the outside. So what does this mean for our experiment? Well, when people exhale, they breathe out a combination of nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide gas. When we breathe through our water bottle, those gases are going to be trapped within the soap to make incredible bubbles. So what this means is the bigger you exhale, the longer your bubble snake is going to be. All right, y'all, before we get started, we have to talk about safety. You'll often see chemists like me wear goggles and gloves, especially if we're working with volatile chemicals or with extreme temperatures. Today, we're not working with anything too innocuous, so I don't think we're going to need gloves, but you'll definitely see me put on my safety goggles. I would also encourage you to use an adult, especially to have them help you with the first couple steps. And the last thing is this demonstration is definitely gonna get messy, so either go outside or have a towel nearby. So now, what do you need to get started? A plastic bottle, a thin towel, a rubber band, food coloring, water, dish soap. You'll also need a bowl, a spoon, and some high quality scissors. All right, let's do this. Goggles on, my friends. Try not to mess up the bun. <laughs> all right, so the first thing you wanna do is grab an adult, all right? They're gonna help you with this very first step. So you're going to take your plastic bottle and your scissors, and I want you to open up your scissors, have your adult help you. And what you're gonna do is very carefully cut the bottom part off of your container. Okay, so you're gonna cut the bottom edge off that plastic bottle. So you really only need this mouthpiece right here. You don't need the cap, so if you wanna take that off, you can. But you need the mouthpiece and about two or three inches here. So I'm gonna keep cutting. Do, do, do. Scissors. Okay, I'm gonna keep cutting until I have about two or three inches here and then the mouthpiece. Okay, so now what we're gonna do that we have this prepped, we're gonna put this to the side and we have to prep our rag. So you're gonna take your rag, a whole rag is fine, but I like to quarter mine a little bit. So I'm gonna take this and cut off just a section of it. So just slice it right up. Like I said before, you can use your towel if you want. Um, if you don't have a towel or a rag nearby, I'd highly encourage you to use like a t-shirt or a sock or something like that. Basically anything will work as long as it's not like a paper towel. That will not work, okay? All right, so we've got our rag is ready, our apparatus is ready, let's connect the two. So you're going to take your plastic bottle and put it on top of your rag, just like this, okay? So this is gonna go down, then you're going to wrap your towel just like this, so it's around. That's when you grab your rubber band. You're going to wrap your rubber band around your towel so that you are fastening it to your plastic bottle. So when everything's said and done, you should have the mouthpiece accessible, a couple inches of plastic, and then you should have your rag completely attached with the rubber band right there. Then go ahead and set the apparatus to the side. Now we have to prep our water, okay? So we're going to take our bowl and our spoon, you can take the spoon out if you want, but you're going to grab your water and your dish soap and dump it right into the bowl. So now, it actually doesn't matter how much water and soap you have, but the ideal ratio is about two to one parts water to dish soap. So you just wanna make sure you have a little bit more water than dish soap, but if you like bubbles like I do, go ahead and add some more dish soap. Then we wanna stir it up. We wanna make sure we have this really nice homogenous mixture so it's gonna look like it's one phase. You want all those bubbles mixed in with the water. And you don't want it looking like the bubbles are sitting at the bottom, if that makes sense. So stir, stir, stir. Okay, once that is ready, you can go ahead and take your spoon to the side and grab your apparatus again. 
So now here what we're going to do is take your food coloring and add stripes. Now, you can get creative here if you want. You can add sp spirals, you could add zigzags. I have found that stripes work the best, but that's just me, so get creative. The best part about being a scientist is you can explore. You can do a bunch of different experiments and see what works best, right? Try some zigzags, try some with stripes and see what you get. I'm going to use red and yellow today just because I want to. Feel free to use one color, seven colors, eight colors, whatever you want, just have fun with it. Okay. All right, so now what we're going to do, let me get this out of the way, you're going to invert your apparatus. Okay, so food coloring and uh, tag down, tag down, uh, apparatus down, towel down, that's what I'm trying to say. Then what you're going to do is dip it in here, pull it out, let the food coloring drain. It is going to fall into your bowl, so let it drip out. Take a deep breath in and make your bubble snake. important role here because the dish soap is absorbed into the towel fibers until we can use our breath to push the gas actually into the bubble. Now you may notice that some towels work better than others, where the perfect ones are just thick enough that they can absorb the dish soap, but still thin enough that you can use your breath to push the bubbles out through the towel itself. Now, what about the food coloring? Why did we add the food coloring to the towel instead of the water? The goal of this experiment is to get a really nice multicolored chain of bubbles. So the reason we add our food coloring to our towel is so that we can maintain our stripes of, in my example, red and orange, but in yours it could have been blue and green and purple or whatever colors you would have chosen. But if we had added our food coloring to the water directly, all of those colors would have mixed together to give us this black gunky solution. So when we dip our towel in there, instead of maintaining our beautiful sections of color, we would have ended up with one long, awful black looking bubble snake. <laughs> So the thing is, keep experimenting, try different things, see what happens if you add the food coloring directly to the water. Maybe that's a, a bubble snake that you would enjoy. That's the best part about being a scientist, is trying one experiment over and over again, but changing one variable at a time. So for example, what do you think would happen if we doubled the amount of dish soap in our water solution? Or what if we used a three liter soda bottle instead of this tiny plastic one? Or what do you think would happen if instead of using this thin rag, I had used a beach towel or a bath towel? That's the best part about being a scientist is you actually get to go explore, ask a question, and then do some experiments to try to find the answers. Last but not least, remember to clean up your workstation and recycle anything that you can possibly recycle. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Dr. Kate Bieberdorf, and I hope you watch more videos that are part of the Science at Home series by 3M.